Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God and Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near you, your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. The new land is near. Yes, I tell you, the new land is but a view away. Hang tightly, for as your knuckles turn white for gripping too long, soon the blood of God will be flowing through the city. Yes, the heart is pumping and the city is awake again, bustling around, labor pains gone, nothing remembered but the sweet smell of the Lord's favor. Be joyful, be expectant, for what a season we walk into. Every tear is wiped clean and every lash is healed fully. Yes, no more aches and pains, no more wandering in chaos. I am a righteous God and every dog will have their day. Yes, every dog will have their day. Laughter resounds and the glory falls. Catch it or go into a great slumber, for the time will be present soon. You won't want to miss it. Hi, everyone. We're so happy you're joining us for another episode of the Olive Press. We hope you have your hot cup of coffee or tea ready as we dive back into our topic of fear and really what fear looked like when we started stepping into our God-given purpose and into our own healing ministry. It was about... I guess 2016, I think, is when I had this vision. It was right before the three of us were going to move to Nashville, Tennessee, because that's where God was calling us. Really the first time ever calling us out and onto the waves, so to say. And that's the vision that he actually gave me. It was when we were making that decision, were we going to trust his voice and go, that I had a vision of Jesus out on the waves calling me out, actually calling all three of us out, and then three animals appeared. And... After the vision, Taylor said, the Holy Spirit gave me interpretation that those are our three biggest fears. Mm -hmm. And so we realized that the Lord gave that vision prior to the whole Nashville experience because that was really our training ground and the beginning of us stepping into our ministry and discovering what that ministry looked like. And in order to step into our purpose, we were going to have to overcome our greatest fears that Satan was using to try to hold us back from that. And so... Two episodes ago, we talked about my fear, which had to do with the fox. Last episode, we talked about Taylor's fear, which was represented by the deer. And this episode, last but not least, leaves us with Madison and the animal that represented her fear, which was an elephant. And yes. that's where we begin. And that's where we're going to start off. And the elephant really represented in the vision. Immediately when I heard it, I knew it was my fear because it was saying the elephant in the room. It was kind of representing more of that, like the elephant in the room. And the elephant in the room has always been, I have grown up with epilepsy and I was diagnosed at age five with that. And we like to say it's the elephant in the room because honestly, I've lived a very normal life. Very, I was not held back by this. Luckily, they have always been very controlled. So it wasn't talked about as much in, in our house, which was a great thing because I just felt... Like we are living our normal lives and 
as a family, we never really made it a big deal. Our parents already said, Madison is no different than any of us. You always do the same things. Mm -hmm. So it's not like they emphasize, oh, she has epilepsy, she has seizures, something holding her back. It was more something that was just, you know, kind of under the rug. Like she lived with it, they were controlled, and we didn't really talk about it. We didn't talk about it every day, which was a great thing really for you growing up. But when you look at it, what you are carrying, maybe other things that crept in, such as the fear right. of being embarrassed of losing your place and not knowing when to speak, or is this going to happen when I'm in front yeah. of friends or public speaking? Fear of public speaking, which is crazy yeah. of what we're doing now, because I always said I'm not going to be speaking to large amounts of people. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so that's why it was the elephant in the room, because it was never discussed. Yes. And we never talked about your fear openly with all of us and said, Correct. Madison, how are you doing today? Because we wanted her to feel normal. And so we were doing that as a protection. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, with someone living with it, maybe that was something, it was the elephant in the room that we just didn't want to talk about to make you feel bad mm -hmm. or less than. But we also were not recognizing it as something you were carrying. That's correct. That's correct. And so I just kind of want to rewind and tell you a little bit about how it started. And they started as absence seizures. So absence seizures are more like stares or daydreams. So you're talking and you may look off and lose consciousness. And then I come back and I don't know where I am in conversation. And so that happened all the way till I was 16. From and kindergarten. They were very controlled again. So I, I didn't have many of them, which I'm so lucky about that. But then in 16, when you're 16, you either grow out of those types of seizures or it can go into more of the grand mall, which most people recognize as the shaking, you know, they recognize those types of seizures more. And mine did develop into grand mall seizures at 16, but again, not often at all. It would be like every three years or so. And it was so random. They came out of nowhere with no sign of them coming on. So that was pretty normal, I would say, up till college. And then when we entered into college, my freshman year, they started happening once a month. And that is when it became extremely scary because we didn't know why they were happening or what was causing them. If they them. were gonna keep happening and what was controlling them. Because like we said, there was no symptom or sign of what, what triggered this to go off. It could have been, you know, the Florida heat, we were playing lacrosse. It could have been your the change of environment, the change stress, of schedule, yeah. the stress. But the, we, the doctors could not pinpoint what it was. And so really, that's a scary thing. They went to school in Florida. So, yeah, 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 you didn't say that. So at that time, um, basically, I stopped playing lacrosse and we really started declaring and decreeing healing at this time over me, which is funny because these types of situations can either lead people to completely turn away from God or to go all in. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we had, we had been praying for healing, but never practicing again, boldness of laying our hands or decreeing any kind of, we weren't used to that yet because right. that's we, hadn't, not something, we hadn't learned about. Yeah. We, that's not something we grew up with, you know, really unknowing about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Right. And so yeah, our mom was always interested in healing because of Madison and the journey we, you know, we're, we're going through as a family, she was always interested in it, but we never grew up in spirit filled um, churches that were teaching on that. So I remember in high school, the three of us, when we were working at the beach together, we said, all right, girls, we're going to use this summer to start declaring Madison's healing when she started having the grand mal seizures. And so we started doing that praying together yes. I would say, more intentionally then. But yeah. when Madison and I, when they were happening once a month, when we were by ourselves in college, that is when we said, oh no, Satan, we see, we were actually saw them as an attack. Okay. And that's when we started really decreeing and declaring that we would not allow this to stand in our mm -hmm. lives right. and take away from our joy. So just real quick, I want to pivot because I think this is a really great teaching lesson about at this time when I, saw, I had to stop playing lacrosse and I, we dove more into finding out what was going on, of course. That time was extremely hard because this was a type of a loss of identity. And I want to say this because so many people I know go through the same thing, especially in sports. And when you, yes. you know, all of a sudden blow out your knee or your shoulder and you can't play anymore. Taylor and I had always grown up playing three sports. We played our whole life. We were athletic and really our identity was in being an athlete. And we, we basically knew we were going to go to college and play lacrosse. We always had that. I always thought that was going to be part of my future. That's always what I saw my future as playing sports. 
So when all of a sudden you get to your destination and that is taken away from you and you cannot do, you, you're not, you know, your plans are, your right. plans are yeah, destroyed. in your own mind. <laughs> you start to wonder who yeah. you are, who you are. And Absolutely. you know, well, what is it? What am I going to do? And what, what does this make me? How does this make me feel? And I just want to tell you guys that it's completely okay to be feeling that way, but we can't stay in that. We can't stay in that place. Sometimes God has to break down the identity we think we have for ourselves in yes. order for him to bring his purposes to fruition in our lives. 100. And well, this is not easy. This is not an easy thing. I'm not making light of this because it is hard, but this is what he means when he says, you must die to yourself in order to gain full life. And this can give you hope that maybe if God is redirecting your path, you know, he probably has a greater purpose. Well, it is. His plans are always greater than our own. His thoughts are bigger than our own. So it is him redirecting you to your true purpose, not the purpose you think you have for yourself, but the purpose that he has for your life, which is always greater than our own plans anyway. And the amazing thing about this was at the exact same time that Madison, you know, was going through these seizures and that having to stop playing lacrosse, I actually tore, blew out my entire knee in one of the games. Mm -hmm. I mean, what are the chances? Mm -hmm. In that same year. In yeah. the same year. And I said, oh, and this is freshman not year. year. Something not together because how is this happening? This yeah. is freshman year. This is right when you got there, yes. the beginning of your yeah. lacrosse career. I mean, this is crazy. Good. Like it was like no time wasted. Yeah. That God was removing to build and girls. It was during that time where you did start getting connected with a spirit filled church and yeah. tell them about that. So God wasted no time because just as this was happening in that transitional period, we found a spirit filled church right by our campus that we started getting plugged into. Mm -hmm. And we started realizing they were teaching us the things that we had been experiencing, but we could not, you know, put a finger on it. We knew we were having, you know, these visions from God. But when they started teaching us that these were the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that this is in, in the Bible and that mm -hmm. this is prophecy and revelation, they, they started making clear for us what, everything that we were experiencing and it started making sense of, mm -hmm. oh, well, this is why, this is maybe what God wants us to step into and focus on in these years that right. we're here. Right. This is what I say, no matter what, when you have an uncontrollable thing happening to you, yes. this specifically, I see it more with people with illness, chronic illness or disease, you can't control the situation anyway. So I always say, are, you, are we gonna live every day feeling down and you can live two ways feeling down and depressed and hopeless and self and in self-pity or you can say no i can't control it anyway so i might as well live to my fullest potential and honestly you i think there's no other way to live really than to because we're all gonna die anyway we're all gonna go through this stuff and if you can't control it then there's no use in feeling down about it too you might as well try to be happy. Yeah, that's yeah. All, that's I have to speak to the loved ones who walk next to the people mm -hmm. um, who are who do go through physical these physical things because it is just as hard being someone as a twin sister watching my sister, you know, something happen to her body, being in a seizure and having no control over that. That is the hardest thing to live with is not being able, you know, we're as humans, we want to help. We want to have the answer. And when you're sitting there and everything's out of your control and you have to watch something happen and then you don't know whether the person's going to come back the same or be the same afterwards, you know, that is, that is so much fear to live with. And I have to say that living with, living through, through these things, these times of no control, it really teaches you how to fully surrender mm -hmm. because Without that, I, I don't think I would be fully surrendered to God and all in. It really does give you a higher perspective on life, on what's important in life. You look at it at a bigger picture and you think, Lord, if I can't control this, then I know that it is only you. And I have to trust you in, in every day, in every circumstance. And I have to realize that you you control the days of our lives and you have the, the ultimate outcome. So why am I holding on to this? And like you said, you have to choose in your everyday, am I gonna live a life in fear? We can all t we can think about COVID and the years yes, that we just went through. Yes. Am I gonna sit here? We know what's happening around us. We know we we can't outrun it. it. It's 
in our world. But am I going to choose to sit here in fear and mm -hmm. in trembling? Sure. Or do I know that my God has the ultimate control? Yeah. And do I know my God is above it all? And that it's in his timing that, that life and death are given. So what, why am I sitting here in this? And the, the Lord told me that in a dream once. He showed me two cars and they were two masked men in one. They were so scary looking. They had these like demonic faces on. And then the other car was this car that represented joy. It was going down a path that you could just tell was like a, a lighted path. And he said, you know, choose which car you're going to get in because you can choose to live each day in fear or you can choose to leave, live each day in joy and expectation. Yeah. And like you said, yeah. Madison, that's, that's, what, that's what we do have control over. Yeah. We're not so control we do over have happening. control over what's We have control over our perspective and over the way we're going to live each life. And I think that was very evident in how you lived your life growing up. A lot of people didn't even know what you were going through or what you, what you were suffering with because of the joy you had, because you were, you were with Jesus. You were kind of allowing him to, to lead your life, and you were living in that hope and expectation. And so many people didn't know, you know what you were carrying into it. Which is a testament. And, you know, this is back to what Madison wanted me to share about tests versus attacks. One way, when we're trying to attain what Taylor's saying, finding the joy amidst our hardships, which I can just hear in my head right now, so many people probably watching saying, you have no idea what the, the physical pain that I feel every day. Like the, it's, it's almost impossible for me to be able to, to move. Sh move, like show joy or even stand up, let alone stand up, you know? And if we can just begin with changing our mindset, with changing our perspective to all of this may not be an attack of Satan against us. Rather, it may be a test from God <laughs> that is leading us into that strength that he's building in us as we step into our true kingdom purpose and die to ourselves. And sometimes there is, when we're talking about physical ailment, ailments, there is a physical process of death symbolically that happens to the person that we, that we are, that we originally are, that, that God has to literally physically break down in order to build us into that, into who we're made to be for the kingdom and for our kingdom purpose. And Jesus actually says, you have to die to yourself. Yeah. He's not saying, you know, you can die to yourself if you want to, you know, be, he says you have to die to yourself in order to be rebuilt, you know, reborn into is a person that we're supposed to be. And so, dying to your thoughts of your your own dreams, your own purposes, your own thoughts for your life. It's dying. Life. It's really yeah. dying to that, so that God's plan can be exposed to you and through you. And we can look at the story of Job, where literally Satan had to ask God. He said, "Can I have permission to go attack Job, the the most suffering person there is in the Bible, who got literally." His family taken away, his wealth taken away, his health, his health taken away. And he did everything good. He was one, he was like the most righteous men, men yeah. on the earth. Yeah. yeah. And the Lord said, yes, you can go. Just do not take his life. So if the Lord is giving Satan permission, you don't think that he's coming to test all of us? Right. And that's God allowing it to happen. Yep. yep. That's right. So uh, I just think that's just yeah. so powerful. Yeah. And, right. and it gives us hope in knowing Job still, this is a story that we can take from it. Job still said, it doesn't matter what you take from me. I am going to worship the Lord. I'm going to have faith in my God. And because of that, the Lord blessed him double fold. And he got to turn to him so much more than what he could ever ask for or imagine. Yeah. And that is how we have got to live this life each and every day because yeah. we don't have time. We don't have time to be wallowing in our sorrows. Yeah. And I know that can sound like, oh, get over it. But honestly, there's not enough time to be wasted when we're only here for a short time anyway. That's right. Yeah, that's right. You know, I love one of the um, women in our Bible studies. She said, she's a teacher. And she said, you know, it's when the teacher is most quiet. But the teacher is always most quiet when a test is happening. And think about it. You know, no one's allowed to talk. Not even the teacher. You can't even go, you know, talk to the teacher and get them to help you during a test. And that's how God, our, our teacher, when we feel like he's silent, when we feel like he's not there and most removed from us, 
it, we could very likely be in a testing point and he's watching to see how you're going to react and how you're going to, how, how you're going to respond. And then he can redirect you and, and bring in the help needed in order to grow you where you need to be grown. So let me give you a step to help you in getting here and into changing your perspective, because this is something that I did during this time that completely changed and, and I grabbed some paper and I'm saying, put down the phone, put down the electronics, pick up pen and paper. And every night, every single night I wrote down, I am healed. I wrote this down when I didn't believe it, when I truly was, you know, thinking there's no possibility of this, but it didn't matter. Every night I wrote, I am healed, period. I am healed, period. And I did this for two, a year, probably two years or a year and a half, whatever. And all of a sudden I realized that I started to believe it within myself. It was slowly training my thoughts. I'm training my brain because our brains are so capable, guys. We are tapping into half of the stuff that our brains can do because your body, your mind can either make you sick in body or it can make you strong. Right. So I always like to say, concentrate on that spirit within that is strong and healthy. And healthy. Don't concentrate on your sick body. The Bible says in Proverbs 18, 14, the human spirit can endure a sick body but who can bear a crushed spirit? Mm. So, oh my gosh, that is one of the most powerful Bible verses. If you want to write that down and continue writing that down, I'll just continue writing that down, I'll just then our body is going to start catching up to it because our minds can literally help change our physical, our physical beings. You know, one of the, um, one of Satan's greatest, in his his weapons, I guess one of his greatest weapons in forging, you know, his attack against us is to create self pity and to create us and in sickness and physical sickness when we physically can't. We always use the analogy physically can't even lift your hands to praise the Lord, you know, as as a picture because if we're so weak and so broken down physically, he, you know, we we get in that self pity and then we really. It's that's such a powerful weapon because we have no empathy or sympathy for other people. Right. right. When when they're talking to us, and this is, I mean, this is the whole point of Christianity is really to be able to help others. And here is one of the biggest things he can use to stop us derail. from doing that and derail us from that by, you know, if you're going through all this hardship and then you hear someone else's story, you have no sympathy because you're thinking, uh, please like walk a day in my shoes. Mm -hmm. Like I did this and I'm going through this right now. Don't want to hear it. Or, you yeah. know, it's, right. it's, it creates no sympathy. And mm -hmm. that is, I just want you to keep that in mind. If you're struggling with self pity and you're struggling, not even with that, but relating to others or even caring about others. And when in fact, the way we have to combat that is to force ourselves, even if you don't feel like it mm -hmm. to actually do the exact opposite and throw it back in Satan's face by picking one person mm, yes. to help or to I listen to or to encourage. I think that's a great thing. And one thing you can maybe tune into when you're feeling sick in your body is it doesn't matter. How am I feeling sick? How am I feeling sick? And can this relate to someone else? So yes, yes. this is a new perspective change you could have. You could say, oh, who do I know that maybe suffers with migraines? If, I like to think of it this way because then I'm not focused on myself. I'm thinking, oh, Oh, I have this horrible headache. Well, who suffers with migraines all the time? I'm going to reach out and let them know, you know, I'm, I'm feeling what they're going through right now. And I'm just letting you know, you're in my thoughts and prayers at this time. And you are not going to stay in this. You're going to get out of it. And by even just focusing on someone else that it just shifts your whole perspective. Yes. I remember laying in bed in 2020 when I got hit with COVID, I, I actually didn't test positive for it, but I knew had it. I, I was out down now for three weeks and I was laying in bed and I was thinking that the fear can take over and make you think, oh my gosh, you know, panic is enough to put you into a panic attack. But I started thinking, who do I know who go, who's going through chronic illness? And during that time, I reached out to so many of my family and friend members, my family and friends who I hadn't like checked in with, with in a while, mm -hmm. who I knew were going through serious things. And just thinking about them and sending them prayers during that time totally got me in a new mindset. And we're not even thinking about myself laying there in yeah. sick. And I just want to say, this does not have to be just for sick, sick people. Yeah. This is 
any circumstance or situation, there's so many people out there that think, oh, my relationship with my husband is not as good, or looking or be like, oh, you don't even know like I'm, what I'm dealing with at home, in my home life. Right. You don't even know what I'm dealing with at work. You know, you would never understand that. Th this can be applied in any situation. This yeah. is not just for, for a sick box. We often go through the very thing that you're sent to walk through is the very thing that God is back to that training ground to it's, he's training you in it to ultimately give you an authority over it. Mm -hmm. So we have found that being in healing ministry, that it's often the things people have had to, they've had to walk through at first and then they get in a, a specific anointing yes. for healing in that area. So say you walk through cancer. Well, you may very likely have a, a specific anointing to heal cancer. And, and it's like, you know, someone in a weight room, you have to lift the 10 pounds. You have to conquer that first before you can make it to the 20 pounds, before you can make it to the 30 pounds. You have to go through it first. And then the authority, the strength over it is put upon you. That's so good. And I just want to read out of my journal. And this was all the way back in 2016, right when I was in the thick of it all. And it's just so amazing to look back and see what God does in, in you. And I just thought this was a perfect little passage. I couldn't believe I found it when I was reading it the other day. And I said, it, it goes perfectly right here. So, so relatable. It's so relatable. So this was May 1st, 2016. God, or shall I say Satan, is really testing us. At the time, it, I was thinking it was Satan. It, may, it, was, it was definitely God. Hitting us where it hurts the most. That's right. The Women's Lax Conference Championship was today. And yes, this being our senior class, I have to admit, I still have bitterness in my heart towards this, even when I pray all the time to take it away. It's so hard to know your potential and then never get the chance to show it. I know this is nothing but my pride, but I figured out that this is my sin and temptation and I must face it. Let me tell you how hard it is to walk around the stadium with a smile on, cheering and congratulating all the girls on the team, knowing it should have been me and very easily could have been. But the best part of all of this is that I can smile and cheer because Jesus is in me. This is so great. Oh my gosh. When I don't feel like it, Jesus does. I want to be the person people look at and can say, wow, what a happy, positive, and encouraging girl, not a complainer. I think one of the most amazing points my pastor pointed out in his sermon was how when Jesus was hanging on the cross, he didn't say, I forgive you. He said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. He could not do it himself, but God in him could. And that is the weapon we must use in these difficult times. Now, let me say, I am more than blessed that my anger comes from something as small as the cross. But temptation is temptation. And temptation is the devil who I will rebuke. <laughs> I must look at what I've gotten out of all of this and the bigger picture, healing, baptism, and my church. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, oh, now that's embarrassing for me to read out loud, but it was, I just think that this is what so many people actually face. And I thought, yes, this can really be a testimony for so many others because they're feeling the exact same way. It's well, real, but yeah, it's real and authentic. And really what stuck out to me when you were reading it is how amazing it is that you actually recognized that back then. Yes. And you wrote it. You, know, you recognized the bitterness in your heart that you were facing. I know. And you were like, Lord, I'm asking you to take it away. That's the number one thing yeah. we can do as listeners is, yeah, it might be there. The, the pain, the hurt, it still might be there yeah. in, in you. But if you can just recognize it, that's the number one step. That's Same. enough to healing it. And to asking God, yeah. God, will you do it for me since I can't do it for myself? That's, that's it. That's it. That's it. And you said in that, you said that, you know, it's not something as small as a cross, but it really wasn't. It's really something huge battling with seizures is really what it was. And mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. wow. you know. And that, identity. And, and identity. But, you know, that's amazing that you mm. kind of saw it in that way. Like, wow. you know, just being lacrosse. And so. Well, and I also want to say when you bring that up. So many people will make light of what they're going through, just like this, just like this, making light of lacrosse or whatever. But what you go through, only you are going through. So you are going to feel that heart and that pain, and it doesn't matter what it is. It can be so small, but to you, it is still temptation, and it is still bitterness or the anger that's holding yes. you back. 
And you don't have to feel like, oh, my, my burden is not as big as him or her that's dealing with this. No, it is. That's not true at all. Because we're all going to carry, we all have our different things to carry, and all of them are the same. Mm-hmm. Because it's all training us and teaching us how to yeah. get over our own self-pity or our own self yeah, I don't know. And for your life, right. for your life, that's all you know. I think this is a perfect place to take a commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to teach you how we gained our authority through this trial. Beverly Hills Precious Metals Exchange is a client-focused firm devoted to assisting our clients with precious metals. Our clients range from first-time to serious coin collectors and investors seeking to add precious metals to their investment portfolios. We are not interested in volatile investments, leveraged products, and intangible assets. With rising inflation and the devaluing of the dollar hurting middle-class families, investing in gold and silver ensures protection for your hard-earned money. Save the value of your money today by investing in gold and silver at Beverly Hills Precious Metals. So Restore is a product that does what it says it does. It's It was made to, after you're detoxing and you're getting your body to zero in and focus, to restore the overall body. It's a strategic combination of ingredients that will help restore your gut, but help your body reduce inflammation and, and function better in conjunction with its siblings. Remove the bad stuff, put amazing stuff in, and let your body handle the rest, because we're made to be amazing. We just haven't unlocked the potential until now. Okay, everyone, welcome back. Um, We just shared our story, really Madison's testimony of growing up with epilepsy. And now we are in our college stage of life where the Lord is really redirecting our path from playing lacrosse, Um, And he really got us plugged into a church at school where we were really learning about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And at this time, we were, before we went to the church, we were experiencing visions and dreams and prophecy, but we just didn't know what they were. And the church really taught us what they, you know, that these were gifts of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So now that we knew what they were, Madison and I, you know, really took a lot of time at school to do meditation, to read the Bible together in the morning. We were really diving in. We were even fasting together a lot. And it does say in the Bible that, you know, for the the boy with seizures, the Lord told the disciples, the only way to cure epilepsy is through fasting and prayer. So we we were all in with all these things. And um, that's when the Lord gave Mass and a vision at this time. And that's where we're going to go in now. Yes. And so this, well, it wasn't exactly this time because I, we were having, we were experiencing many visions, yes. you know, throughout and mine were very symbolic. So I didn't always know what they meant. And we always had to wait and just put it down and see what the Lord would reveal. So I would say this was actually probably two years later that I had this vision of a black panther on fire. And it, the, the very first thing I saw was yellow eyes staring at me and I wasn't scared. It it didn't, it didn't frighten me. And I was just like, what? It was more like, what is that? And out of this cave jumped a slick black panther and it was running in a circle on fire. And then I saw this wave come in and I knew it was up to me whether or not this wave would come or not, which is very interesting. Hold that thought. And the wave came, wiped out the fire and the panther rose like, like in a rapture, like rose up. So I was like, what the heck? That's crazy. So I said, oh my gosh, girls, this is what I got. I just had this vision. I don't know what it means. We'll have to wait and see what God reveals. So I put that away. And it wasn't until the following summer, which was like six months later or so, that Matt and I were working at the beach. Mm -hmm. And now so much time has passed. We're living our normal lives, school, work. You know, you're not thinking, you've had several visions in between or other things that have happened. So we're not thinking about this at all. But um, we were worshiping one morning before work together. And I think you like to point out how important that is. Like the oh, vision. The wor- you mean the worship. Yeah. That ain't the work in. You know, many, many people think, oh, you're just chosen for God to speak to or, you know, you're set aside or special. No. It is open to every single one of us. What you have to do is you have to put work into it. It is not a one-way street. A relation, No relationship is and definitely not a relationship with God. And so... The Holy Spirit, yes, it can fall on you at times, but a lot of times you have to usher usher it in by getting in the present, putting your worship music on, getting into prayer, even when you don't feel like it, and you do your end, and then God will come in on his end. So many people, yeah, they love to say like, 
oh, how, how, how do I get all these visions? Or how do you get it? And we say, it's, you have got to put, you got to put the phone down. And so many people don't want to take that extra time to turn off their TV show and put on some worship music. But yeah. you're not going to be hearing from God if you don't take this time and you don't take it for yourself and put the work in. Yeah. We say you got to put the work in just like those weights in order to get to the next level. You can't just stay at home on your couch. You got to get to the gym. Yeah. Right, right. Truth, truth. So here we were again one morning worshiping together. And instantly, it's like a revelation just dropped in. We always like to say we got to download. It's like, girls, I got to download. And it's just instant revelation. The Lord brought back up that panther. Who that I had not thought about at all. And he just showed me that this panther represents Madison's seizures. And in my journal, I even wrote, or her fear of those seizures. It's this panther represented her fear of the seizures or the seizures themselves. And in this season, I'm about to wash them out. And I was like, whoa, Lord. I was like, um, okay, well, hopefully that was your voice and not my own thoughts. But I said, Madison, this is what the Lord just downloaded out of nowhere. So um, let's just claim it for you and see what happens. Like, you I know, know, research. And I was see like, what do we know what, the, what a panther means in dreams and visions? <laughs> so I'm a researcher. I like to go, you know, and look things up all the time. So I'm like, have you looked it up? And she said, no, I, I never looked up what that means. So it's, you can get, you know, you have to be careful when you start researching things in dreams and visions because it can take you down to new age pathways. But as long as you, we always say, as long as your heart is focused on Jesus and God, and you're, you know, the word of God, you know how he speaks, yes. then the Lord won't steer, steer you wrong. And when we look up things, we usually say, what does the Panther represent biblically or in scripture? Biblically is a key. Yeah. To type that in. Yeah. So I don't quite remember what I looked up, but I looked up the black Panther in, in dreams uh, or in spiritual. And what it says was that the Black Panther represents something that has held you back since childhood. Oh. And, the, and it is about to be released from you so that you can step into your full purpose. And I was like, wait, what? This is insane. And then it said, oftentimes the first thing you will recognize are the yellow eyes staring at you. Oh. And this represents healing at a cellular level. Cellular level. That means physical healing. Physical healing. And Guys, not only did it say that, it then said a black panther also represents a spiritual seer or someone who could see in the spiritual realm. Prophetic, a, a, prophetic a, seer. a prophetic seer. And so mm -hmm. you're about to be released when it's held you back from childhood so that you can step into your new purpose mm -hmm. and into your prophetic gifts, into your prophetic mm -hmm. seeing. We, we screamed. We screamed. Yeah, we screamed. We said, okay, okay Lord, we claim what? it. And we, we will receive that. So before I forget, I just want to bring it back to that wave when I said I had the option to bring the wave or not because God, God will and can bring healing and he will do it in his own time. But we have got to be ready to surrender and to receive it. And, and you have to be willing to let go of, of certain things. Like, as we said, die to yourself. You have to be willing to let go of yes. some things in order for him to do it. Just like, I had to let go of my lacrosse or identity at the time and say, all right, Lord, what else do you have for my future? And then he's able, that wave was able to come and he's able to heal you fully. And I think a lot of people also are comfortable in their sickness. Yeah. Just like the man, the man on the mat. When the yes. Lord says, roll up your mat and walk. A lot of times we're just, comf it's weird to say, but just comfortable yes. in it. And we're actually afraid afraid to for the healing right for what god is calling us into that's right. or what he's asking of us yes definitely i could say i never in my life thought i would be stepping out in ministry i would we healing, healing others healing others. healing others i mean we were that wasn't even on our radar no we're playing sports and stuff and now you're telling me i'm going to be Preaching. laying my hands and declaring healing over people and that's why we say the things that you walk through are the things you've probably been given authority over and they're the things that that satan is most afraid of that's yeah. why he is attacking you that's there. why he is attacking you because yes some a lot of things are attacks that god is allowing him uh -huh. to but it's why that's the area of attack because he is so afraid of the full potential that's going to be unleashed and so he causes that intimidation it's just an intimidation factor to make you retreat that's right to make you that's right. back. So, so it says Satan is coming to kill, steal, and destroy. Yeah. Kill, steal, and destroy. So he is going to uproot your life. He's going to try his hardest to distract you and to put you on a 
on a path that is opposite of where God has you. And like we said before, Satan has no right to take a life. So God is the author of life. Yes. He, will, he will declare yeah. your day of death and your mm -hmm. day of birth. So what we're saying is Satan is coming to kill, steal, and destroy your destiny. Mm -hmm. And he will make you think that you do not have a destiny or a purpose. Yes. That's what he's out to get because he doesn't That's want so the kingdom good. of heaven to be brought to earth. Yes. And all of our purpose has to do with bringing the kingdom of heaven mm -hmm. to earth. Right. So he needs to stop that because he knows his day is over once that happens. True. So he's doing everything in his power to kill, steal, and destroy. That's our purpose of that's bringing heaven to earth. earth. Yes. One, and yes, that's the purpose yes. he's attacking in your life. And that's why he wants you to make you think you have no destiny and no purpose here. Mm. So Madison, let's let's tell them about, let's bring it back to the elephant. Because, you know, we want to bring this full circle that, you know, this all happened. I would say um, when you were in college, when you were a senior, that was 2012 or uh, 13 around yeah, 13, 13 through 16. around 2013 12 through 16 oh, 12, 12 through 16 okay so around 16 because right when they got out of college is when we got the call to move to nashville so right around well, 16, i want to say i went five years seizure free guys yeah, yeah well, i was gonna yeah 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 definitely we, we went five years seizure free from that moment from that moment that. from that moment on until i got that revelation and yeah that's a testimony all itself we have more coming that it will be for a later episode, some suspense for you guys. But I did go five years seizure free. Hallelujah. And it was Amen. in 2016 when we when I had that vision of us being called out of the waves when we were going to move to Nashville. That at that point, pretty much the only proof, so to say, that we had from God that He was really calling us into a healing ministry was Madison's story. Was her healing because we did see her being. Uh, at that time, it was like four years seizure free. Yeah. So we we knew we believed one hundred percent she was healed, and that that was our confirmation that okay, God did call us into a healing ministry. That's why we're going to move to Nashville. That's why we're trust what we're using kind of as our trust. Like we can do this. We can yeah. go there to pursue this because we've seen it with our own eyes, and it's time to spread it with many others. Yes. And that's the point where we're gonna leave off and so we want to leave you with that cliffhanger for the next episode and as we close out today we want to do something a little bit different we want to play a song and so we want to help you create the space right now wherever you're watching from just get yourself comfortable whether it's laying down sitting down standing however you want to get into a meditative prayerful state of mind and we're going to play this song and we want you to think about your fear. And if it's too overwhelming to think of a bunch of things, think of just the biggest one right now in that you feel like you're facing in your life. And I want you to picture, when, when we close our eyes and play the song, I want you to picture that you're standing on the beach and you see the ocean out before you and Jesus is out there and he's standing on the water and he's just looking at you and he's telling you to come out, come out. Mm -hmm. And Take it from there. What happens? What do you see? What do you see yourself do? Maybe maybe you meet one of your fears out there. I don't know what will happen. That's between you and the Lord. But we just want to help you get into that, into that space because that was the beginning for us of the revelation happening so that we could see what we had to conquer and then conquer it. And so mm -hmm. let's just open it up. We'll just say, Lord, we just invite you in right now. We just ask for you to just send your Holy Spirit into every home, every office, every space of the people watching, Lord. And would you just help them to just let go of everything that's been going on in their minds, Lord. Help them settle right now. Lord, bring in your shalom peace. And Father, would you just center people's hearts on you and speak to them, Lord, whatever it is you need them to hear in this moment. Amen. Amen. Nothing can separate us now. Nothing can separate us now. It is finished. It is finished. Nothing can separate us now. Nothing can separate
Make sure to write that down because we all know it's so important to write down our spiritual experiences so that the Lord can speak to us about them later down the road when maybe we forgot. And with the date, put and the this date. is your triple braided core challenge. Just start writing down what you want to see in your life. It does not have to be healing per se. It's just things that you want manifested in your life, what your future holds. Yes. And just start writing it down every day. We believe, we believe things are going to change for you. And guys, we've been getting so many questions. How can you reach out and been getting so many questions? How can you reach out and contact us? Please go out and you can email us at info at braided cord dot org. Yes. C O R D C that cord C O R D. You can visit our website at www.braidedcord.org. Yep. You can follow us on Facebook at triple braided cord. It's or the three of us or on Instagram on Triple Brady Court. Yeah. And those are always you can contact us, ask us questions, and really get involved. And we will do our best to answer the questions that you guys have. And we want to hear testimonies too of, you know, just things that you've done with your Triple Brady Core group or even just you and yourself of the way you're seeing God or learning to discern his voice. So let us know so that, you know, it, it can help us as well. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Keep your lamp burning.